Hey there. When I was 19 years old, I played eight poker tables at once and was making more money than my parents combined. But a few years later, I left poker behind and started working in data analytics. And then I realized something kind of weird because the same tricks that helped me win at poker, they also helped me win with data, with stakeholders, with slides and with storytelling. So in this video, I'll share the six data storytelling lessons I learned at the poker table. Lesson number one. It's 2009, I'm sitting in my student flat and I've just lost 45,000 US dollars playing online poker. Ouch. All that money gone in one night and I feel frustrated. I feel angry at the cards, but also disappointed with myself, with my decisions. And the next day it still hurts, but I sit down on my desk not to play again, but to analyze every move. Where did I do well? Where did I mess up? If you want to become a better data storyteller, you need to do the same. So get data on your performance. After a presentation you're giving, reflect yourself. What went well and what can you improve? And second, ask a colleague for feedback. And third, record your meetings if possible and throw in the transcript in ChatGPT or any other AI tool. And then ask three questions. Where did I lose interest? Where did I make it too technical or details? And how can I simplify? And third, where did I miss linking it to business impact? And how could I do this next time? That's how I improved at poker, by studying every hand. And that's also how you improve at data storytelling, by studying every story. All right, lesson two. It's 2009 and I get into trouble at airport security. The security guard unzips my bag and pulls out this huge stack of bills. And he asks me, what is this? I think, oh shit, this looks so suspicious. I just played a poker tournament in London. How do I explain this? And I say, uh, I'm a poker player. And he looks at me and I'm trying to think as fast as I can. How can I prove that I'm not a criminal? But then I remember. My poker hoodie is in the back. It got the logo of the poker side that sponsored our team. So I show the hoodie and he nods and lets me through. I was unclear and got into trouble. It's the same in data storytelling. If you're unclear, your stakeholders tune out. They will assume that your insight isn't relevant. So next time you present, translate your technical insights into business terms. Create a new habit. Every time you present an insight, say this. What this means for you is, for example, we're missing customer IDs in 30% of transactions. What that means for you is we cannot link those sales to campaigns. So we don't know which campaigns are driving the most sales. See the difference? But just translating insights isn't enough because for every presentation, you need the next lesson. Annie Duke is a former poker world champion and she shares a simple trick in her book, Thinking in Bets. Most people only analyze decisions after they go wrong but great players do it beforehand. They ask, what could go wrong? It's the same in data storytelling. Before a big meeting, ask yourself, what could make this fail? What might confuse them? And what difficult questions might they ask? You can't predict the future, but you can plan for it. And that's lesson three, plan the failure. Preparation helps, but once you're in the game, everything changes. In poker, you don't just play the cards, you play the people. So you watch their faces, their timing, their patterns, it's the same when you present data. Storytelling is a live game, so you've got to read the room. If people lean in, keep on going. But if they look confused, slow down. And every now and then ask a question to check in. Does this make sense so far? The best storytellers don't just present, they make it a conversation. But there's another layer. It's not just reading them, it's reading yourself. In poker, when people lose a big hand, they go on tilt. They get emotional and they stop thinking clearly. They make super bad decisions. And it's the same in data storytelling. When someone challenges my numbers, I feel that spark inside, defensiveness. And if you're like most people, you probably do as well. Once that happens, you stop listening. You start fighting to be right. And that's not a good place to be in. So here's the fix. Replace defensiveness with curiosity. Next time when someone says that your data cannot be correct, don't say something like, I already checked that or something else defensive. But ask, that's interesting, what makes you say that? And then you open up, you get more information about what they're thinking. You stay calm and they feel hurt. 
And that's how you win the hand without losing your cool. That's lesson number four. Play the people, not the cards. But poker has taught me one more lesson, and it's a big one. When playing against an aggressive player or a passive player, you play differently. And it's the same in data storytelling. You don't present the same way to everyone because all stakeholders are different, their role and their personality as well. So you want to tailor your presentation to them, whether it's a C-level executive or a fellow analyst. With executives, you focus on the why, the impact on revenue or cost. But with peers, other analysts, you can focus on the how, how you got there. Same insight, but a different strategy how you present it. That's lesson five, tailor to the table. But here's the last lesson, one that keeps so many smart data professionals stuck in their career. A few years into poker, some of my poker friends moved to Malta. Tax-free winnings and beach views, it sounded amazing. But something in me hesitated. I didn't want to spend my life playing poker. There was so much more to explore. So I took a different path. I quit poker, went back to university and joined a student board running a bar. It was one of the best decisions I've ever made. That's where I learned people skills. And I'm so happy I did. Working with data, you can chase every new tool or technology, but that's not what it's about. The real growth comes from how you connect with stakeholders, how you influence and how you communicate, because that's how you create impact. That's how you make sure people use your insights and appreciate your work. So lesson six is choose the right game. All right, enough about poker, but there's one question left. How do you actually create a data story? I'll show you in this video, the exact step-by-step -step process to turn data into stories. So click here to watch it and see you there.